What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Back with my post fight for Guillermo Rigondeaux versus Charles Jazza Dickens. And it's not too much to break down with the fight, it ended prematurely. Rigondeaux had a single shot which landed flush and broke Charles Dickens' jaw. So, in between rounds two and three, it was about to commence round three, and Dickens' team decided that hey, you can't continue like this because your jaw's broken, it's only going to get worse. So, they called a halt to the belt. Rigondeaux wins by TKO. And I try to give the good, bad, and the ugly. Let me try to do it. It was a short fight, so it's not much to decipher and pick from. The good, Rigondeaux is back. And you clearly see the level of skill and why people moved out of their weight division not to fight him. Guys like Leo Santa Cruz, guys like Carl Frampton, guys like Donaire after he already lost. But I give props to Donaire because at least he fought Rigondeaux and took the fade and took the L. And then he moved out. Doesn't look like he wants a rematch. But this is why. I mean, he's a difficult style. His power is there. He has speed. He has reflex. He changes levels. And he's just a skillful fighter. On top of that, he's a southpaw. And good poker face. The fights where he's been hurt and knocked down. He gets back up. And he does have a mean streak. A lot of people, oh, he's boring and stuff like that. And this is boxing ego. This ain't HBO commentary. You know what I mean? There's a different level. HBO in his last fight they threw him on the Coto Canelo undercard and he literally had two weeks maybe less maybe like 10 days 11 days to prepare made weight and it wasn't his best performance it wasn't an exciting fight but you got to take all things into consideration I mean he did that in two weeks notice you look at other guys in other divisions I'm not going to single nobody out but they wouldn't even be able to make weight within two weeks of the weight class that they're in like you look at welterweights and if you told them hey make weight in two weeks they'd do all kinds of stuff they'd like cut their stomach open trying to make weight you know what i mean with that little time to prepare so you got to give credit for rigging out for staying in shape it wasn't his best performance but he didn't have a full training camp so for this fight he did have a full training camp he got his passport a visa this fight was supposed to take place previously but it got canceled because he had passport issues but then it happened and most people picked and favored Rigondeaux as expected, but this opponent, Dickens, was a southpaw as well, and that could be an advantage, you know what I mean? Instead of being an orthodox against the southpaw, Rigondeaux did did what he had to do, broke the dude's jaw, and somehow I'm, I'm I haven't really because I'm doing this promptly. This video I just the fight just ended. I think people, some people, like dumb fans, casuals, will find some way to blame Rigondeaux for a boring fight or a second round fight. He broke the dude's jaw. You wouldn't blame Josito Lopez for breaking Victor Ortiz's jaw. So that's just nonsense. The bad, um, not really anything bad for Rigging now. The first round was a filler round, but he, I thought he did the better work. I mean, he just, he's, he's kind of economical picking his spots. And then the second round, he landed a huge flush punch that sent his opponent back. Dickens tried to respond, but nothing Dickens landed was better than what Rigondeaux landed with that big shot, which is obviously apparent because he broke the dude's jaw with that single shot, right? And the one of the bad things is, I love the UK, I love the British, I used to live in England, for those of you who don't know. The UK boxing commentary is laughable. It's, it's so funny, sometimes the refereeing too, and I'm just keeping it all the way real. British boxing has a lot of champions, there's a lot of people I'm checking for that I like, but the commentary is egregious. Like, the love that they show for their UK fighters in their commentary, is blatantly painstakingly obvious like they said round two was level how is it level when dude Rigondeaux landed a huge shot that jarred his opponent back you know what i mean that was better than anything dickens did dickens looked tentative so let's talk more about the bad the bad for dickens is i don't think in those two rounds he had the great game plan a lot of people they're they become timid and gun shy like Igbeko and dickens and stuff and it looked like early on and i tweeted this so you guys can check it it looked like dickens realized he was after round one that he was in over his head this was before the huge money shot that broke his jaw it looked like he just realized it was like this dude's of a different class and rigadell barely even got started he barely even began to open up and work and stuff like that so the the uk commentary was egregious they're saying round two was level dickens didn't even do anything and he got his jaw broke and that obviously called a halt to the bout which they didn't know at the time but it just shows you that commentary. I had both rounds for Rigondeaux, period. The They were trying to make it sound like Dickens was super competitive. He barely, 
even threw anything. Rigonel had the better shots that he landed, even though he was being economical. His defense looked a bit better. I mean, there's no way you, it was a shutout, and then he got his jaw broke, period. You know what I mean? So I don't understand the, the UK commentary saying that round one was super close and uh, round two was level. Like, how often do you see American or any other boxing judge from anywhere else call a level round? You know what I mean? Like Sean Porter and Keith Thurman, there were a lot of rounds that were very close, and I still gave it to a person. You know what I mean? When's the last time you just watched it and you're like, man, that's an even round. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't happen too often. But one of the problems with Dickens that I noticed is fighters like him, it seems like they, they burn too much unnecessary energy. Like he's trying to move and feign and, and create some head movement, but he's not throwing with it. Like you, if you're doing that like a Mike Tyson, like to get into position, like doing that, burning energy, moving your head, whoo, ha, you know what I mean? Doing that then that's effective. But if you're in place, not throwing shots, but you're using and exerting all this energy, then you're just burning wasteless, countless energy for no reason. So I think Dickens a better game plan for him since he was a fellow Southpaw. Just establish a hard jab, keep jabbing. Most people that rigging out fights at this division are a bit taller than him, maybe bigger than him and things like that. So utilize that, try to jab him, disrupt him, because you don't want rigging out to get comfortable. If he gets comfortable, it's a wrap for you. I mean, he's gonna give you different looks. Like I, I noticed, rigging is a master black. He's a he's a master class boxer. I seen in round one. He just just very subtle things, and you probably don't notice if you don't appreciate the sweet science. But came out with the high guard, then he dropped the guard, then he went back to the high. Like he, he's doing little subtle things like that to give you different looks, and it makes it hard. And then all he does is he can accelerate from zero to 60 and land that sniper's shot on your chin. And I mean, Dickens took it, but since he wasn't prepared for it, he got his jaw broken. You know what I mean? It is what it is. So there's a reason that rigging out is avoided and this is it. Whether you like his style or you think he needs to throw more punches, he doesn't really have to. He threw one punch that broke someone else's jaw and then a couple other punches throughout the round. And then that was the end of the story. So. Like Floyd Mayweather said, work smarter, not harder. I mean, these guys need to bring a fight to Riggin now. Use your style. Even the Magasa, he was going for broke. He was trying. Magasa was from a, a, a higher division that dropped down for the opportunity to fight Riggin now, right? So little stuff like that. Bring the fight to him and try to make it to go out like a warrior, you know what I mean? And that's what um, a lot of Japanese fighters are known for, the, the Kama guys and the Magasas. I mean, whether they lack the skill or not, a lot of them are very tough. And they're gonna try their best and go out on their shield. You know what I mean? So people have to start doing that. You you can't outskill Rigan now if you're a guy like Jazza Dickens. So you have to just try to box the perfect fight. And I thought he was burning unnecessary energy. Rigan now just he's like he's kind of playful with you in there. He's just doing what he wants, and you have to find some way to disrupt that, right? You don't want to be on the outside of those sniper shots. So congrats to Rigan now. He broke his opponent's jaw. It's not really much to critique. I mean, you could say, oh yeah, he, he should have threw more punches or made it more action-packed, but he, he didn't really have to. Dickens was losing, despite the UK commentary. So, props to Riganow, he did his thing, on to the next one. Let me know who he should fight next. There should be some good fights out there. Hopefully he can get a bigger fight, and it is what it is, but I mean, the dude is a problem, clearly, and he's gonna be like, whether you think he's exciting or not, the, the bottom line is nobody wants to rump with him. Nobody wants to get in that square circle with him. Very few people, right? And that's just what it is. Drop in the comment section. Let me know what you guys thought if you did watch the fight. Can't wait for Wilder versus Ariola. Sammy Vasquez is fighting. And I'm going to check all those fights out too and be back. Let me know what you guys think. Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you like the video. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe to the next video's ego sun and all. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.